If anyone has a green finger, I do not believe in the green thumb. I believe in the green muscle. You work on it over time, all right? Let's see what you got. Darlings, I am plant queen, the resident house plant guru, and today I'm answering some of the most popular plant care questions on TikTok and Twitter to get your green girls to the next level, honey. Let's get into it. What's the deal with misting plants? Is this how I should water? No, 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 no. With the average tropical plant, misting is typically used as a quick fix or a band-aid to adding humidity to that plant. Adding mist or water droplets onto leaves of particular plants is not being really helpful. If anything, it's going to potentially, those water droplets on the leaves could attract pests, could attract bacteria, and that's not what you want for your green girl. If you really want to increase the humidity around your green girls, invest in the humidifier. All right, we got someone on set that submitted this one. I'm not gonna name any names because we what? Create a safe space up in here. <laughs> Okay, it says my fiddle leaf fig has a, cr <laughs> a crustiness on some of the larger leaves. What might have caused this? All right, this is pretty easy, right? So one, this plant needs to be repotted into a more permanent home. It's still in its nursery pot, so that could definitely impact the health of this particular plant. And the crustiness or the dried edges, if you look to the back, I believe that is a heater and heaters suck out moisture, right? And they can burn our plant. So we just wanna make sure that we do not have our green girls, especially a finicky and diva-like queen like the fiddle leaf fig near any heat sources or cold drafts because you will have this situation happen with some browning on the edges. What's a soil probe and do I need one? This is a soil probe, bam! So what is a soil probe? A soil probe is the device that you use to test the soil moisture of the soil of your green girls. So here we have a Dracenia, and these queens enjoy drier soil. So what I'll do, if I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't really feel as deep as I want to in the soil, that I'll take this little soil probe, put it into the soil, bend it around a little bit, right? You take it out. And then look at that. You have some soil right here from different parts of the planter. So I can test the most bottom layer of the soil. Pretty dry. I can test a little bit more upward. All right, that's, that's dry too. And then I can test that too. And so that's dry as well. And so this is perfect for green girls that are in larger planters where you really can't get to the bottom of the pot or you can't get to the soil near the root. So yes, you should get one, invest in a soil probe. I think it's a wonderful investment and allows you to make sure you're not overwatering your green girls. At Philip Shake, dear gay plant Twitter, I need to get on Twitter. What am I supposed to do with these plants when it comes to decorating for Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas? XO, a new plant mom. I think there's a couple things that you can do when the holidays roll around. If your green girls are a bit sturdy and can hold decorations, I think that's a wonderful way to uh, style and jazz up the green girls you already have. If you are looking to bring in additional plants uh, to decorate your space, say a Christmas tree, I would encourage you to just make sure that you're separating your house plants from that temporary plant that you may bring into your space to decorate because that plant could have pests, could have bacteria, could have a plant disease that could spread onto your house plant. So either decorate your queens and just make sure that they're sturdy enough to hold those decorations or bring those new queens into your home and just isolate them from your uh, existing plant fam. All right, that's Sloppy Joey. Literally every leaf from my ficus tree <laughs> fell off when I moved it into a new room. Is it dead? LOL. And I'm assuming that the ficus tree may be the fiddle leaf fig, but in general, ficus trees are very, very moody. So with the fiddle leaf fig, in my experience, when you're moving that queen about and into new environments, she's gonna experience transplant shock, right? So transplant shock is when you change the environment, the temperature, the humidity level, the sunlight condition of a particular plant, and they go into a state of shock probably enjoyed or may have enjoyed the spot she was really in. And now since you moved her, she's like, I don't know 
what to expect and this is new conditions and so she's going through a state of shock and losing all her leave. What you can do is try to nurse this green girl back to life. I would reduce the amount of water. I would try to put her in a sunny spot but not too much direct light and she may begin to sprout. I had a ficus umbilata which is like a newer cousin of the fiddle leaf fig and she had one leaf and uh, I made sure that I uh, was patient with her. I watered her sparingly throughout you know, a few months and now she has three amazing leaves that she's growing. So don't give up hope, sloppy Joey. Give that queen some time to readjust to that particular spot and she may come back to life. But if she doesn't, practice grace and forgiveness as a plant parent. Plant parent struggles are a real thing. And then if anything, you learn something new and now you can do better next time. All right, SC Bus Local Love. Meet Venus and Serena. Love the name. I'm deciding between separate pots or combining. Sisters should stay together, right? This is lovely. It looks like there are two Marble Queen pothos. When you're, you know, taking, you know, your green girls from a nursery pot to a more permanent home, that's the perfect excuse to combine your green girls together. One thing that I enjoy doing, so I'll typically buy two of the same plant if the price is right, and uh, I'll place them at different parts of my apartment to see how well they do in different conditions. Or if you already know the place that you want to put this green girl, I would just put them together, place them in that spot, and then just let them grow into their lushness. Next question. Someone told me putting coffee grinds on top of the soil acts as a natural fertilizer. Is that true? It's tricky when it comes to using natural fertilizers, especially if you're using like tea leaves, banana peels, coffee grinds, or eggshells, because those natural organic materials are typically rich in very particular nutrients. Now, the thing to be mindful of when it comes to the nutrients that our green girls love, there's three main nutrients. N, P, K, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And so while coffee grinds are rich in nitrogen, you also want to make sure that your green girl is getting potassium and phosphorus. And so I found it easier to sometimes use synthetic fertilizers that has all three of those nutrients so that I can ensure that my green girl is getting all the nutrients she needs instead of one or two. But if you have the time, you can go ahead and create your own little recipe, but it's just gonna take a little bit more intentionality to make sure that your green girl is getting all the nutrients she needs to grow and thrive. <laughs> at very small feet. Hi, at very small feet. Plant people, can anyone recommend a plant app? Hashtag plants, hashtag app, hashtag plant help. So I actually don't really use a lot of plant apps. If anything, I'm using the plant app to identify a green girl that I don't know. I've done this when I'm in a park and I'm like, I wanna know what kind of tree this is. And I'll take a picture of the leaf with the app. So more of like an identifying kind of assistant. When it comes to taking care of particular plants, I think there's a little bit more involvement. You have to know your space. You have to know your own behavior as a plant parent. You have to do inspection, look at the roots, look at the leaves. And sometimes you just can't use do that with an app. So yeah, I encourage if folks want to invest in the plant app to assist, but don't have it be the end all be all for caring for your plants. The one I use to identify plants is picture this. And so I would just like take a picture of a plant. Let's see what, I just want to see how accurate these things are. So this, let's see what they say. Okay. It was right, okay. This is uh, the leaf of a, a traveler's palm. All right, so yes, these apps can be helpful, but when it comes to caring for your plant, I wouldn't have that be the absolute truth. Hey, Plant Talk, I need help identifying this pest. They look like spider mites, but they're bright red and there's no webbing. I have never seen these before in my Ooh, life. Leafy diva, <laughs> I feel your pain. Woo. So honestly, it looks like spider mites. This doesn't look that bad, I would actually try to do a neem oil treatment. Got it, ooh, look at that. She's a football player. Okay, hold on y'all. I think it's neem oil for your hair. <laughs> 
So neem oil is a wonderful natural pesticide that you may want to utilize when you are treating your green girls for any pest or maybe taking some preventative measure. You do want to make sure that the neem oil you get is actually for a plant. So I would douse her with some neem oil and you probably have to do that maybe every week or every two weeks. Just make sure that you don't have these leaves that are doused in whatever chemical that you're using or a pesticide that you're using don't have that queen in the sun because she will experience sunburn. Okay, next one. I've somehow killed eight out of the 10 plants this year. Am I a terrible person? No, you are not a terrible person. It happens. I'm not even gonna tell y'all how many of the green girls I've sent to Little Botanical Garden in the sky. Yes, it is in the double digits. All right, you know, that is a process of me learning the kind of plant parent that I am and what plants work well in my space and work well with me. And so we all have our ups and downs, life happens. No, you are not a terrible person. You still have two of those green girls. So just continue to learn from your mistakes and just do better next time, darling. There you go, those are the questions for today. Hopefully you learned a little something new about your green girls and how to care for them in all the best ways. Honey, I will see you next time.